Johnny Phillips with Junior Achievement of New Jersey, where we prepare students to succeed in the global economy. And my name is John McGinnis. I'm a financial solution advisor uh, at, with Bank of America and Merrill Lynch in New Jersey. John, I want to thank you. Thank you for taking the time to shoot this quick fire shot chat with me around the holidays. I'm um, sharing some insight for for our young people. Um, to start, would you mind sharing your job story, meaning any jobs you've done in the past, and how um, that has led up to you and your your current role in Bank of America? Sure, I'm more than happy to. Uh, this is a job of passion. Uh, I'm a financial solution advisor in the bank, so what that means is that I can help clients with their banking needs, like checking accounts, CDs on the bank side. But more importantly, I can help them on the investment side at Merrill Lynch, and that's like 401ks, IRAs, mutual funds. Uh, and this all started, I was a trader for 35 years on the trading floor. If you ever saw the movie Trading Places, mm -hmm. uh, that's, what I, that's what I did for a living. And if you look really close, you'll see me in it with 1982 hair. We all made mistakes. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, that's what I did for a living. I loved it. But... After I left that, I semi-retired for a year and a half. It's like, what do I want to do next? And I went to a friend's house, and she had a Geico insurance card on her table. And I said, oh, by the way, if you own one share of Berkshire Hathaway, you can get a discount on that. And she goes, this is what you should be doing. You know all this financial stuff. And I mm -hmm. took over my family's finances when I was 13 years old. Uh, we were poor, blue collar. My father was didn't make it through high school. He was a, a con he, you know, used his hands. And I learned how to buy and sell coins from my grandfather mm -hmm. on my mother's side and hustled and made money. So I started investing for my parents as a teenager. With the profits from that, when I was 19, we bought a dilapidated three-family house. So while my friends were down the Jersey Shore having a great time, yeah. I'm on the roof touring it. <laughs> but yeah. doubled the value of the house, had positive cash flow, and bought two other houses after that. So what I'm getting at after this story, uh, I'm helping my family change their financial history. I've done that for friends and families all my life. And now I'm in that role where I can help clients and other people. And I really love being able to change somebody's fa family history and finances. Now, John, thank you for sharing that. You, you mentioned uh, some interesting things. So you started off with, it's, uh, it's a job of passion. And we see that because your job story kind of started as an entrepreneur. You kind of figured it out. Um, for yourself, right? How can I make this work for me and my family? And then yes. scale yep. that into, you know, working with, with families and helping to change their financial history. That's that's really big and really powerful and not something that a lot of young people really think about. I can take coins and start to invest and oh, really yeah. help my entire family. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. you know, that's, that's a great, great um, insight that you shared and, and kind of how you made it work. And you got me thinking on how your education path might have um, help this or help you leverage yourself a little bit more in terms of, uh, you know, your your life for finance, your life for making money. You know, how did your education play a role? In <laughs> um, not, I went to college for about 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, I went, it, you know, college wasn't for me. And uh, I lasted six weeks mm -hmm. and I quit because I wanted to get on the playing field. I didn't want to be in the stands. Uh, just me. Now, both my kids went off to college because they said, well, Dad, you didn't go, but times are different. Um, so, yeah, so I left. I went to the University of Hard Knocks, uh, you know, made mistakes financing, you know, in finance as a kid. Uh, but I just hustled. And when I was 19 years old, I went down to the trading floor. This is when gold and silver were, were going nuts back in 1979, 1980. And being a coin collector, it drew me there. And I started as a runner on the exchange for EF Hutton, I would take an order off the machine, run it to a broker, and I made about $124 a week doing that. Mm -hmm. But I wanted money and I wanted, you know, to buy a house. So I worked a lot of overtime. I would go in at four o'clock in the morning, work the London shift till eight o'clock, have mm -hmm. breakfast at nine o'clock, go down to the World Trade Center where the exchange was, and work until five, six, seven o'clock at night there. So a lot of hustling. So education, no. I University of Hard Knocks. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, John, to your point, that is an education in itself, right? You can okay. educate yourself, um, you know, in the street, on the floor, in the okay. in the work world. You know, you're still educating. It's not the traditional sense of, of going to get a degree. Um, and I like that you keep mentioning your interest as a coin collector and how this kind of kickstarted um, your, your career, in a sense, and your entrepreneurship. 
But when was it that you realized you had an interest in in coins and and in doing this and in, in doing this kind of work? That's easy. Uh, for my communion, my grandfather, who's an Italian immigrant, came over here with you know no money in his pocket, not knowing the language, and became a successful fruit and vegetable man in Newark. Uh, he was a coin collector, so for my communion, he gave me a coin collecting set. And when you get a dollar a week allowance back then, that's how old this, how old I am. When you see a nickel can be worth two dollars, you pay attention. So yes. I would go to my father's change every day, you know, and trying to find coins like that. And mm. uh, and here's a funny story. I hope um, when I was lawn cutting, when I'm 12, 13, 14 years old, I would take my lawn cutting money, go to the bank, ask for rolls of half dollars. And with the half dollars, you can see the silver in them and you can sell them for three times face. So here I am, $10 roll of half dollars. Maybe I get three or four out of them. Well, I can sell each 50 cent piece for a buck 50. So that's mm -hmm. how I made money that way. No risk. <laughs> yeah. And I went, there was like five banks on my street I would hit like three times a week. A little mm -hmm. weird for a 13 year old, but it, you know, made myself a couple of bucks. So it all goes back to my, my grandfather who inspired me and taught me that. Hmm. Yeah, now I ask is there's a great power in being able to use your interests to develop skills and further interests and actually make something of it. So, um, you know, thank you for sharing that. And thank you for sharing the piece around your family, you know, being an inspiration for you and and being willing to take part in what they're taking part in to go ahead and develop your own interests. I think that's um, very important for a lot of young people to hear in terms of um, immigration and, and not ha being the first in your family to figure it yeah, out. Yeah. You know, you can always just use the interests that you have right at home and go from there. I mean, you sound like you're a pretty ingenuitive uh, kid and you know, <laughs> had it figured out. I like <laughs> <laughs> and I relate with that. Um, but if you can go back and, and potentially give your young self um, any advice, what do you think um, you would say? Uh, I don't know, because I mean, I want to say it, it turned out OK. Uh, be a little more focused, yeah. you know. Uh, I mean, you're 19 years old. You want to hang out at the beach, but you also have a responsibility. Uh, so maybe budget your time a little better. Mm -hmm. uh, like I say to people, you got to budget your finances and you also have to budget your time. Money you can always make back. Time, here it comes, there it goes, and it's gone and it's not coming back. Yeah. But, uh, I would say write down your goals and your plans. Uh, really focus on that. You know, so if you're staring at your goals and your dreams every day, you'll get laser focus and probably accomplish them sooner. Hmm. But having it in writing, right? I mean, just, oh, just and just writing. It. Right. Yeah, just by seeing it. And that's good. Doing some goal setting, right? And doing some kind of yeah, journey, yeah. right? And, and figuring out what it is that you like, what it is you want to do, and, and how you're going to get there. Um, mm -hmm. Nice. Um, to end it off, is there any additional resources you would want to share with any young people who are interested in maybe becoming a trader, um, a coin collector, <laughs> a financial solutions advisor? Um, are there any resources that you would want to share to how to develop these interests and how to further um, that path? Sure. Um, BetterMoneyHabits.com. Uh, that's something Bank of America uses. And it's awesome. If I, I tell, especially kids or anybody under 30 and Actually, a lot of adults do. Uh, if you have credit questions on, you know, how to use credit, you know, how to start saving, how to start planning for retirement, it's a great website to use. Uh, three to five minute videos there. It's not long and boring. It just starts, you know, getting your interest peaked in it. Uh, there's such a tremendous advantage now with the internet. Back when I was a kid, I had to trudge off to the library to look this stuff up. Mm -hmm. Now it's at the end of your hand. Um, mm -hmm. Listen and read. And here's the easiest thing to do, follow successful people. I mean, I can't have my broke friends giving me advice about money because they're broke. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. And that's what I learned as a kid. What do rich people have? Well, rich people have assets like stocks and real estate. So mm. pattern yourself after rich people is what it comes down to. I mean, if you're a musician, you're gonna pattern yourself after a guitar player you like or a piano player you like. If Definitely. you're a sports fan, I played hockey, I'll get patter myself after Wayne Gretzky. In mm. finance, it's the same thing. Find a mentor. Find somebody who you think is successful and just ask them questions because you, you know what? They will share their story with you. Mm. That's somebody nice. probably helped them and they're paying it forward now. Mm. Thank you for sharing that, right? Just using 
your network and, and finding what it is you're interested in and finding someone you can follow and, and kind of reinforce your own personal ideas around. Because um, we can't all do it alone. <laughs> we all need some guidance. We all need to ask some questions. So whether it's a famous person or someone you know in your community, kind of find a mentor and follow along that path. That's really, really powerful. And I think, once again, something that a lot of young people need to hear. So, John, as you mentioned, right, time is very, very important. One of the most important things. So we say it, time is one of the most uh, important things you can give. So from Junior Achievement, we really do appreciate you taking this time out of your morning to sit and shoot this quick fireside chat. Um, happy holidays, and we look forward to working with you in the future. Yeah, thank you for this opportunity. If you have any questions, feel reach out to me. And thank you so much for doing this. This is very helpful to this community, and I appreciate it.